Why did GM go and do such a stupid thing? We'll find out what that is in just a moment. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. So here's a little tech tip for you engine builders or maybe somebody venturing out to, uh, to build their first engine. Uh, the LS is kind of following in the footsteps of the old mouse motor or the old uh, Chevy small blocks. And that is they're just used in about everything because they were used in pickup trucks and cars and just about everything since 1998, I believe, 97, 98. And so there's tons of these LS motors from a 4.8 liter all the way up to a 6.2 liter. Now we're even starting to see the 6.6s in the later generation motors. But anyway, these things are everywhere. They're easy picks to use as power plants in just about anything. And more and more people are choosing to build these LS engines because let's face it, they're easy, they're cheap, and they build a lot of power. Now, one of the problems on these LS engines are the pistons just aren't designed quite right to scavenge the oil. Now, before I get into too much detail, just want to know that it's also an easy fix. We're going to show you exactly how to do it. And what you need is some masking tape. I know that's some heavy machinist material, right? So some masking tape, paper will work, any type of tape, if you will, um, but something for laying out and marking, uh, a marker and a pen will do great. And then you need a small drill bit set. This is a cobalt set from Milwaukee. They don't have to be cobalt. We're only drilling through aluminum. We're only drilling through the, through the, uh, the piston itself. So that's aluminum. For the LS, you need like a 764 is a good fit because we don't want to hit the walls here on the ring lens. Again, before I say too much, let's go over to the workbench. Let's figure this thing out and we'll show you how to do this. Okay, so these are three different pistons uh, from three different motors, uh, two different style of motors really. Uh, these two are LS pistons. This is an old conventional small block Chevrolet, I think 30 or 40 over 350. Uh, this is a 5.3 piston and a 6.0 piston. Um, but again, these are LS motors, pretty much identical in, in terms of the style it is. Uh, but again, the, the, uh, the old small block piston is quite a bit different. Now, let me show you what GM did and not sure why they did it. And lots of people talk about this and speculate. Um, but really don't understand why they did this. Now, if you look at these pistons, uh, if you don't know what you're looking at, they might look all the same, um, but you can definitely tell the skirts are a bit different. Um, by the way, the skirts are right here on the sides of the piston. They, that's what takes a lot of times the brunt uh, of, the, of the friction here on the cylinder walls. Um, but if you take for granted, here's your small block Chevrolet, your conventional style, your older stuff. Here's your newer LS style. Now, here's one without the ring, or with the rings on it still, a um, couple hundred thousand mile motor, and you'll notice here the top two compression rings, they rotate no problem at all. It's what they should do. They should stay lubricated in the cylinders, they should rotate around and not wear a, wear a spot in the cylinder. And then this is your oil ring here, and what it's responsible to do is you've always got oil that's lubricating the cylinders. Gasoline does not do any lubrication, especially since we've taken the lead out long ago. So not really any lubrication properties in gasoline, so the oil has to do the trick. Well, to keep oil from getting past these compression rings and fouling your plugs and causing problems in the upper end, this oil scraper here is meant to do exactly what it says. Uh, scrape the oil from the cylinders, scavenge the oil from the cylinders, push it back down into the crankcase, and keep it clean. Well, it doesn't do a very good job when it's stuck like you see here. Again, you can see the top two rings. I can rotate these, no problem at all. This bottom ring is totally stuck. You can see here, I can even poke something in there and I can't even get this to move. Now, what's the problem and what causes this? Well, it's not necessarily bad oil, bad oil or lack of oil changes. Of course, that can aid in that issue. Um, but let me tell you where the real problem lies. Let's first look at this old conventional small block Chevy 350 that they made from 1955 to uh, into the 1990s. So many, many decades they made this same style motor. You see that window there in that ring land, that is an oil drain back. So as this oil ring scavenges that oil, no, no, not only does it push it back into the cylinder, but it also capture it in the ring land here and it needs to drain it back into the cylinder, not just, just push it down, it'll push it down as well. And it does so by that huge window there that's right here, as well as over here. 
Now, let's look at the newer LS. And you'll see here, I've got the rings off of this one. So the bottom one is our, is our oil ring or uh, oil scavenging ring, which is really comprised of three different rings. Uh, but anyway, so you can see here, there's no holes whatsoever in this ring land. And then we get around here, there's no holes here either. So here's where it does the oil drain back. So these little two uh, indentions here in the bottom of that ring land and over here is how it scavenges that oil back into the crankcase. And it doesn't do a very good job of it. You can see it starts getting caked up. In fact, these, were, these pistons, I wish I would have left those dirty or one of them dirty. It was just purely caked right here. And so it was literally not doing its job. And this definitely wasn't doing its job very well because it's stuck and it's definitely not going to be pressing against the cylinder walls and doing its job. So that's part of the issue. Now, the great thing is there's an easy way to fix this. Uh, we don't have to do a lot of machine work or a machinist do the work. Just a simple uh, drill bit. So I've got a drill bit right here. And by the way, eighth inch is too big for this ring land. Eighth inch work fine on the old style. Uh, but the new style, the LS motors, eighth inch would be too big, but the 764ths fits very good in there. It's not going to hit the walls. We want to try to keep away from, from hitting the walls here, but we're just going to drill some more holes uh, in, or drill some holes into these ring lands here on the bottom and be able to scavenge that all back into there. Now, let's take a look on the underside of this piston because before we drill holes, what we don't want to do, we don't want to compromise the integrity or the strength of this piston. So what we don't want to do, we don't want to be drilling here anywhere around uh, the boss here that holds these wrist pins. So where these wrist pins go through, the wrist pin boss, that's all the meat that's around this piston and connects this rod to the piston and the piston to the piston top. Uh, we don't really want to mess with that. So we don't want to drill where these indentions are. We want to do all our drilling up here. Let's stay out of this meat here on the sides and so we don't compromise that. And so what I'm going to do I've seen people drill three. I'm just going to drill two holes, one here, one here on either side. And so we've got an easy way to actually mark that. And then we can take it over to the drill press and do our drilling. So there's an easy way to actually mark these. Um, I've seen people use paper. A friend of mine likes to use paper to do this. I like to use a little masking tape just because it's easy and quick. And so I'm going to go. And by the way, just a little, little tidbit of information. When you start this, if you're going to use tape, Start there in between two of those uh, indentions or uh, drain back, existing drain back holes, um, what have you. And I'll show you why in just one second. And then just go ahead and rip your tape in between those as well. Now you want to mark where those, uh, where those existing indentions are. So we're going to mark here. We're going to mark here. And mark here and here. So now we've marked that. Now we can tape our tape off. And lay this out. Okay, so now what we can do, we can go and we can measure here. And so we know that this is one of the drain back holes. These are two of the drain back holes. And this is one of the drain back holes here. Um, so we want to sp split, we want two holes in between each one of these. Uh, so we really want to divide one, two, three. We want to divide by three. Four inches divided by three. What's that? One and a quarter, one and five sixteenths probably, maybe a little more. Um, I'm just going to go one and uh, three eighths. So one and three eighths from here and one and three eighths from here. And that gives me, yes, yeah, one and three eighths. Okay. So one and three eighths from there. And then I'll do the same over here. And by the way, I'm going to mark that these, I'm just going to put it in there for new. So these are our old ones and our new holes. Do an inch and three-eighths, and an inch and three-eighths. 
So we've got a new hole here, new hole here, and there, and there. Now, if you want to, before you, you know, mess that one up, you could lay another one out here and transfer those onto that as well. So it'd be really easy to do that right now. And then you could even, you know, make smaller or larger hash marks depending on what's old, what's new, if you wanted to. So you could easily now have another one already ready before you mess up this one. Um, but anyway, let's take this one and put it back on. And it's real easy to do so because all we have to do is line up our marks, right? So line up the old one right there. And you could put this below the below the ring lands if you want to, so that you can see they're lining up right there as well. Um, or what you can do is we can just drill straight through this tape, which is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to drill straight through this tape. So I changed my mind. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and mark the skirt of the piston right here where these, uh, where these marks are. And then I'll take this off, mark the next one, and we'll go over to the drill press and uh, go ahead and knock these holes out. So I set my drill press on here. And so we'll go in, we'll go to the menu and twist drill. Yep, less than 3 sixteenths. Add a minimum, minimum, minimum. Confirm, yes. Now we can say on. So all I've got here is a piece of two by six uh, with a V groove notched in it. You could take two pieces of wood, put them aside each other. You could use a vise with some soft jaws like uh, aluminum or wood in it. Um, I'm not getting that critical and this notch enables me to kind of hold this piston from rocking. So I can set it on the skirt there, hit that mark, hit that mark, then flip it over and hit the others. And so let's go ahead, get this one ready. Turn our drill on. Flip it over. So that got us the two holes right there. I think I might have touched the ring land a little. Those aren't as critical as your as your two compression rings. Um, and I can also deburr that a little bit with some, uh, some fine sandpaper. But there's two of the holes. Let's get the other two and this piston will be done. Okay, so you see all I did was basically take a two by six and cut a V-notch uh, in the wood. If you needed to, you could easily just take a flat piece of wood and uh, screw two pieces of you know wood on either side or on one side and you just want it enough to where when you put it in here um, you can lay that skirt on it and it gives you a little rigidity there where it's not going to flop all around where you can kind of get the same angle of attack with each one turn the drill on There's one. There's two. Got those two drilled as well as those two drilled. So those along with these drain back indentions there should drain that oil back quite a bit better. That's really probably quadrupling um, the amount of drain back. And by the way, go ahead and clean the back sides of these up, especially if you've got any uh, hangers back here. Um, you need to 
chamfer those the best or knock them down with some sandpaper or something. And then you definitely, all these little bits and stuff, you definitely want to clean this up good with some mineral spirits, um, some degreaser of some sort, because you don't want them getting trapped in here in your, in your wrist, pan, wrist pins and stuff like that. It really is as easy as that. It's not a tough thing to do at all. You could do this with a hand drill if you want to. Just be real careful about getting into the ring lands. You don't want to be scarring those up too bad. Um, but really all we're trying to do is scavenge that oil better. Let it drain back better. Keep that oil ring nice and free. Get that old burn oil back into the engine so it can circulate and filter out and then get replaced when you're when you're changing your oil. You don't want all that aluminum material circulating with your oil through the system, so make sure you get it all cleaned out really well. Uh, probably worked out better if you didn't have the uh, wrist pins and rods connected. Didn't really bother me on this one. Again, it's kind of a 5.3 truck motor. They're just kind of going back together stock, so wasn't worried about it. We weren't going to press these pins out. Uh, the newer gen stuff, like this 6 liter, will have, uh, uh, will have pin detent rings in there where you can, or snap rings in it where you can pull those out and actually just slide the wrist pin out. These are press fit. Uh, these are kind of Gen 1 LS or Gen 3 motor, if you will. Um, so they're press fit. So a little harder to take out. Didn't want to worry about putting that in the press and, and uh, doing that. But anyway, so go ahead and try it for yourself. And if you don't mind, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And hit that like and subscribe button if you like this video. Also, that bell notification, that's going to let you know when new videos are available. Have a great day. Go out and do something nice for someone.